So what is the gospel? This is the first video in a very long series of a, an online class that I've made. All right. And so let's talk through it because what I want to put forward and what I want to try to get out there is that the good news of Jesus is really about the restoration of everyone and everything everywhere. And that sounds quite uh, grand in its scope, but I actually think that if you were to read the passages and, and to pay very close attention to a lot of the things that are said with, throughout church history, uh, you can't help but come to this uh, position. So here we go. Why are there so many interpretations or phrasings of, quote, the gospel? If someone were to, were to ask you, what is the gospel? You might say something different than your friend, or I might phrase it somebody in a way that's different from someone else, you know? But we've got to look. Why are there so many different phrasings? Well, we are prone to interpret or phrase the gospel according to our worldview. If I'm an American, I'm going to maybe understand in an Americanized way. If I was South American, in a South American way, if I was something else, you know, a materialist, a capitalist, if I was something else, if I was, you see what I mean. But this also includes our own spiritual maturity or immaturity. And according to our view of God, if we have a small view of God, then that God is only capable of doing a small amount of redemption, right? But if you have an infinite, looming, massive, large God that's larger than the cosmos, then of course your understanding of the gospel should be equally large, right? So how we understand God sets the ceiling for our understanding of the gospel. If we have a finite or limited God, we will have a finite or limited definition of the gospel. If we have an infinite view of God, we will have an infinite definition of the gospel. You see what I mean? It starts to uh, slowly start to work together. But let's talk about puzzle shapes and the shape of the gospel. Hands down, I'm sure you probably have put together a, uh, a puzzle at some point in your life where you put it out on the table and it takes you 17 <laughs> hours to put it together. You know what I mean? There is a sense in which we are reading the Bible as if we are putting together a puzzle. We have most of the pieces, but we are without the giant picture to guide us. You know the, the picture on the front of a box that tells you, oh, this is what we're trying to make, a cat on a rainbow, you know? But if you don't have the picture, you might only make the cat or the rainbow. <laughs> Uh, the New Testament itself talks about other letters that were lost to the sands of time. We know of another letter to Laodicea, other letters to Corinth, and possibly others of which we are unaware. This goes to say, we do not immediately have the same mindset as the writers of the New Testament who were informed by the Hebrew Scriptures. And so, we're like putting together a puzzle and we don't know what it's supposed to look like. We're just trying to put it together. So another way of thinking about this, another way to look at the issue is it's as if we are trying to do a puzzle without having uh, the edge pieces to frame the whole task. You know, we have the large and easier spots together like the cat or the rainbow, right? But not the entirety. In order to fill in those other gaps, we need to take a look at the avoided passages, the framing passages of the New Testament. It just so happens that these pieces disrupt how we understood the earlier pieces. If you've ever put together a puzzle, many people think that the best way to do it is you start with the edges and it helps to frame the whole thing. Then you look at the picture, right? Well, there's a sense in which there are passages in the New Testament, which we're going to talk through, that frame the whole conversation about what is the gospel. And in upcoming and later videos, 
that's going to go rather deep into some of those. And they really are quite wonderful. So reverse engineer the gospel. So with all this, we have to say this. One thing that makes the gospel so interesting is that depending on what verses one prioritizes, we can come up with very different understandings of the gospel. If you only read Romans, but you don't read Mark, or you only read John, or you know what I mean, you're going to have a different view. So for instance, did you know John's gospel does not mention the word hell at all? If one only read the Gospel of John, how might they phrase what is the Gospel? Or what about Romans, which also does not make mention of hell at all? The book of Acts doesn't mention it once, let alone how we conventionally talk about it today. If you highlight certain passages or you avoid whole other passages, it's going to influence the way that you think about things. And maybe we need to stop taking for granted what we think the Bible says and actually read it in its entirety, in its original languages, if possible, and to read it maybe specifically for the passages that we have always historically overlooked. So let's reverse engineer the gospel by looking at the overlo overlooked passages. Let's see if we can come to a definition of the gospel that could produce the entirety of the New Testament. Ready? <laughs> Here we go. So what is the gospel, the euangelion as it's phrased in Greek? The gospel is that in Christ, God reconciled the world to himself and in covenantal love, always determined to be for rather than against the cosmos and will ultimately and simultaneously destroy that which is evil while restoring, redeeming, reconciling, renewing, repairing, recovering, and rescuing everyone and everything everywhere. So reconsider everything you thought you knew. Repent. Return to your original very goodness and believe the good news that God is for you rather than against you and find yourself refreshed by the fact that God is love. So that's what the gospel is. If you pay attention to the passages that are conventionally overlooked, primarily the passages that use this singular phrase, all things. And in upcoming uh, videos or in, in this series, you'll see that we're going to talk through passages that say the restoration of all things, reconciliation of all things, the regeneration, rebirth, renewal of all things. These passages, I have literally never heard a sermon about them. Maybe because they don't fit into our conventional understanding of the gospel. But maybe they are the picture to help us to put the puzzle back together and to make more sense of more of the Bible than if we just keep avoiding these passages. Yeah? So, what is the gospel? It's how the good news of Jesus is really about the restoration of everyone and everything, everywhere. <sighs> yeah. Honestly, I, I don't know how to finish this video. <laughs> it's just good news, right? So, grace and peace. Cheers.